Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial how to model an earbud with Shaper 3D. In this lecture I will show you the process I use to explore various sketching strategies till I found the combination that allowed me to model the form I envisioned. Let's have a look at the final design. By the way, you can download the file for free, dissect and learn from it. Let's zoom out a little bit and then we go to this view. And you can already see, it looks like we have three groups. Something is happening on the left, then there's a clear change in the middle, and we also have here, it looks like an evolution in three steps. And that's pretty much correct. I started on the left side and then switched the direction in the middle and then actually did a combination on the right side. So let's zoom in a little bit more. And let's take a look what we have. Oh, it looks like a box, extruded and rounded edges. We already then extruded not only a square, but actually something with rounded edges. Then oh, we start having rectangles at the bottom and sketches at the side from the front, sorry, the top. This looks even more organic. Then actually it gets a little bit flatter. And then here it starts to look to be more simplistic, yet still kind of like organic. Okay, so how did, how did I do this? Let's actually turn off all the geometry so we can study just the sketches. So I wanted to have an earbud, 40 millimeters height, rounded corners and edges. Okay, so that's easy. Rectangle, extrude up 14 millimeters. And can round this and let's round that. Okay, yeah, not too bad. What I do not like is I end up with very flat faces. Plus, this is actually not round. So how can I do this better? So from the rectangle, I kept actually these two lines, but then the other two lines are replaced by two circles, which are, as you can see, based on the constraint, they're tangent to the lines. I set circles, arcs, I meant. So if I select this and extrude this up, 14 millimeters, very good. And then round the corners, three millimeters. Okay, well, that, that doesn't look too bad. So nice rounded left and right. But I maintain having something that is flat. Well, here this is gone. The other problem also is this is an arc to a line. And the transition is not necessarily really ideal. It's kind of like a, a G1 tangent. So what I in the next step try to do is instead of having an arc, let's use actually a spline. How does the spline work? So here, for example, is my arc. I will select this arc and then move it actually down. So we just have it as a reference. And here are my two lines. And then there is my, my spline command. And I, in this case, work with the control point spline. And the way how this works is very easy. You start drawing, tap, 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 and go back. Very good. Now here you see I can move these points around and get um, kind of like 
No, not get. I can sculpt actually the shape. Do I want this to be at the beginning? Start changing the direction really fast. Do I rather want something like this? So it's kind of flatter. So that's kind of like the way how the spline works. For those who are not really familiar also with the whole idea of tangency, you see that this spline and this line, they're not tangent. If I select both, you see it says 165. It should be 180. So let's turn on tangent. Now this point, I can only move left and right. If I move this up and down, you see I cannot um, make this curve look like this. I said curve, I meant spline. So whenever we do something spline in a line, always has to be accompanied by tangent if we want to have nice transitions. Okay, let me quickly undo everything I did. There we are. And these two fields I moved up, extruded it, and then rounded these edges. The outcome is actually, if we compare this to here from the flat to the round is nicer here. Okay. And then also this is a little bit flatter while well, here really sticks out. But I end, ended up still having these flat front and back faces. So mm, that didn't really work well. So let's go to the sketch. The rectangle also here I moved down. So I use it as kind of like a proportion. And I have here a closed um, control point spline. Point at the center and point at the corner. The advantage of this is simply now when I select this and extrude it up, 14 points, I have from here nowhere any flat face. It's nice and round, 360 degree around it. And then what do we have here? What's this one for? So I could go ahead and round these edges. Hold on one second. These sketches are in my way. Say by three millimeters. Very good. There we are. Okay. Yeah. But also here I have a spline. You can see how the spline does not have any flat face because I rounded the top edges. This is nicely rounded, but this is still flat. So the two fillets we can delete and select this and then select that and we do a sweep. So as you can see, this is actually going around it. Then double tap the inside, double tap the second object, subtract and there are some funny wiggle lines going on see them here. That is because when we zoom in, there is a tiny gap. Okay, so let's undo that step. This we have to height and this I just make a notch bigger. That's it. There. Cool. Okay, let's zoom in. And wow, as you can see, we also have here nicely rounded vertical yeah, surfaces or faces. And from the top, this whole thing around is nice and round. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sketch. Also here, something that's very important to point out, which will go back to tangency, you see 
the spline and these two lines are all tangent and these two lines are at the bottom and the top of that face. And this way, by sweeping this around, we create a geometry when it cut so that this face is tangent to this face. Beautiful. Okay. Now we can do the same here, 14. Let's take a look at what was all modeled here. So from here, it all looks kind of the same, but then here on the top there, we can see that, Hey, here, this looks a little bit flatter. How do we do this flatter? It's still actually only one spline, but instead of having one midpoint, I have two and that straightens it. So when I go back to a spline and you see when I add more points and line, how this actually starts straightening. It's still a curve or spline. It just looks more straight. Okay, very good. So we have then the same situation here. There is this element. Let's sweep it and then Double tap, double tap, subtract. Oh, this is not 100%. So let's see. Very useful for this task is when we also turn on the show hidden edges. And there we can see it's just a notch. Okay, so you just be a tick bigger. This works so easy. Yeah, cool. Same result, looks pretty good. The problem I don't really like in this approach is, you see here, this is really tight. Uh, this is actually quite nice. You see how this flows. So I got this done actually better. The main difference is if we go to this view and turn all this off, pay attention to how big kind of like, I don't want to say fill it, but the, how big the edge rounding is really big here. It's minimal. And that actually resulted into cutting in more here, making this tight, cutting in less, keeping this nice and round. Um, this object looks better, but it's still not really ideal. I feel like I'm not really 100% in control of what I'm doing. This face, I want to be able to ultimately predict more. So let's turn all this off. Everything what I did there so far, yeah, was a good thought. This didn't really work. This didn't really work. And then I went back to thinking about arcs. Well, I have left and right an arc. Well, I can also have an arc in between. I don't need to have a straight line in between. And you see these arcs, they perfectly fit onto plus minus that rectangle. They all tangent to each other. And when I extrude this and then round these corners, very good. So from the top, this actually looks pretty nice and clean. You see here and here, this is not uh, straight. Uh, still, however, here, this is straight. But now everything what I learned from kind of like this sketch plus this sketch, I can now combine. When I go to here, there you see I created myself instead of having a spline, simply two arcs which go tangent into two lines with a big arc in between. So there's the same sketch 
like here. And now instead of filleting, I will select this and this sweep. Very good. And wow, look at this. How nicely and gentle this is arced. And then there we have um, also rounded corners. And this can even be updated or even removed and brought back because this is all created via arcs. And the arc being swept along this profile and cut, well, it's kind of like a fillet. So that's the reason why I can adjust it so easily. Perfect. Okay, so this basically now told me, hey, no, this is very promising. I, from the top, get everything nice and round. I get everything from here nice and round. Very good. So let me actually select all this and delete it. Then I started to clean up everything a little bit. Same process. Do a sweep, but I will hide this one, go to there. And there you see, I do not have actually these um, corner arcs, which I have here, because actually these corner arcs were a little bit more labor intensive. I simply had lines for the distance and then there's my arc. And from this, I've removed this. There we are. Looks like a cheese block. And then I round this. So the reason why I thought showing you this is so you can understand also how I, with somebody who has years of modeling experience, sometimes has an idea how something could be built, but that does not necessarily always mean it's really working out the way how I predict. So you have to be flexible. And then also you can make things more complicated. So here I have three arcs versus simply one arc a lot easier. Cool. Okay. Now to bring this exercise to an end, I have here this um, audio port. I will just delete it. And then I will show you how I created all this. It's super easy. Let's go back to here. There's actually the geometry for this. Very good. Double tab. Let's bring this over. Then we can decide how many degrees. 25, go to the top view, move the 3D widget. Maybe to here. I want this to be Vertical there, okay. Thank you. Bring this over and then 45 degrees. Very nice. And now I just move this one in. Move this onto the, onto the ring edge. You see how it snaps onto the cap. So now I can just position everything nicely. Move it in and out along the axis. Very easy. I have to make sure that here and there it perfectly is inside. Sweet. Then you and you join. Then I get a nice edge, which I can round as desired. Very good. And now I would like to quickly model um, kind of like the cup that goes over it and goes into the ear canal. 
I could add this to here and then move this over, but this is really not ideal. So what we'll do is the following. This is actually rotated. So that looks very complicated, but it's not. First, we go to add construction axis through cylinder or cone. Select then a cylinder. Um, maybe this one and done. There's our axis. Cool. Add construction plane and through edge at an angle. Select the construction line next. Yeah, we can rotate it because it's it. The axis is rotated, so this doesn't really matter as much. Okay, we can do it this way with the pencil selected with the finger double tap. And now we are actually, yeah, as you can see, really looking perpendicular onto that cylinder. But how do I, how can I now sketch something so it's really snug? I will do this actually. I will select all these elements, so all these edges, and then select the select a construction plane and say project. And sketches, yes, very good. Now let's hide the model. And there we can see actually the circles were projected onto that plane and turned into lines. Pretty cool, no? Maybe here one is missing. So this to here. Project. Thank you. When we turn this on. Um, to be careful there can draw this to there and this to there, this to there, draw this further, draw this further. Very good. Okay. Now I do the following. I will select this long and this long one and delete them and then simply fill in these tiny pieces and then I can remove these pieces there in between. Very good. Okay. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and lock U to U. Perpendicular. Perpendicular. Very nice. Uh, we can do this this way. Perpendicular. Cool. Yeah. So there, now we have. Correct, a cross section through it. And that basically now allows us to very quickly model in context. So um, here is a line, but whoa, what happened? You see where the line went to? Now be careful. Uh, oh, it's somewhere there it's on the ground plane. Because I moved around and I drew while kind of like being the pencil directly on a line, it added to the sketch, but I'm not in that sketch anymore. You see where the, the construction grid is to go back, select the construction plane with the finger double tap. And now I can go ahead, draw something here, perpendicular, specify this as two, make a line there, there. So this line perpendicular to there, then this we will make two millimeters. Very good. This will be 1.5. Very good. So this line, for example, is 5.5. Then this is around 1.25 to so 2.5. Uh, so 1.25. So three millimeters. Okay, three millimeters for 
the opening for the sound to come through. Very good. Okay, here a small line 0.5. These two we make tangent. So, uh, sorry, perpendicular. And then this line is perpendicular to this line, by the way. Cool. Then spline, click, click, go to there and spline to this line, tangent. Very nice. Okay, we're getting to there. Offset by 0.2. I make I make this 0.2 so it simply is a little bit bigger and easier to see. Then we draw the missing connection lines. And we also need to have a little bit of extra flesh there. So this will be tangent. And this I can move to here, wherever I want. Very good. So and then U plus this filling along the axis we revolve. Yeah. And if I show this, there you see how it perfectly fits onto it. And this is the way how I created the cup there, including the sketches. Then um, maybe a few more details to make a design look actually more complete. I have, for example, here a small button. There's the sketch for it. So I actually projected lines in. This was actually quite interesting. And then offset. So let's do this actually here. So let's turn on the sketches. So here we have this edge now. Okay, let's offset this edge. And bring this in. Very good. Let's click this offset. And you can see the way how this was translated is actually a spline. Now, the spline probably is good, but I converted something that was created from an arc into a spline and there's always a tolerance problem. So this is not necessarily really ideal. So how can I do this better? This is actually super easy. I will select those four arcs, then select this face and project it onto that face. And we want this to be sketches. So we will actually create a sketch that's flush with the face that is selected and project those elements in there. See, there we are, cool. Now when we go offset, we can offset this inwards, very good. Now turn model off. Then we can offset this. I make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see, point two. And if I click this, look, that's actually here an arc. And that's an arc. And that is an arc. Just here. Now it created a small spline in between, but also this is an arc. So you can see the geometry of the sketch is actually just cleaner. And um, projecting from a geometry into a sketch and then offsetting it um, can be more problematic, as you saw. And actually projecting an arc into a new sketch and offsetting it very often simply works better because it is just an arc. An arc is very easy to scale up or scale down. 
a spline or so is not. This is just a general limitation in CAT. Then we can extrude this one down, but if we do this while we actually see the other geometry, so on, so let's select this, show this. Ah, you see how this does not actually show up there right now. Okay, let's do a little trick here. Zip, you go down five millimeters, hide sketches, show this body. So there, this body we want to remove from this body. Okay, let's see that one. <laughs> That's not the way how this was supposed to work. Um, I might have to move the top face up a little bit. This is the, the process called overbuilding. So I'm making this a little bit bigger on purpose. So you see how this sticks out. So you to you subtract. Okay, there it is much easier. Very good. Could also be that in a previous step actually had the order flipped. So I used this to remove the ring and not other way. Very good. And then this we can move up by one millimeter. Oh, this is way too much. See it like one millimeter doesn't sound like that much, but at that scale, it really is one tenth of a millimeter. And there, small rounding. Very good. And then I I created a small sketch for the mic opening also here for the beginners. Very easy process. Just don't create any construction planes to sketch onto when we can simply do it easier. So there is my sketch which I created on that construction plane by default, meaning our, our world grid. And now I move this one in as desired, position it, and then zip, let's cut this in. Very good. And this pretty much finishes the story I wanted to tell about how I explored what would be the best way to model an earbud that is kind of like a morph between a cubicle original proportion, but all the edges are somewhat rounded, starting truly really with a box, then going into splines, and then in the end going back to arcs and actually applying everything that I learned while using the splines and then doing the rest simply via smart sketching and direct modeling.